Okay, so let's take a look at um, some momentum impulse uh, theorem questions that involve energy conservation as well. So what we're going to look at is uh, just a quick review of mechanical energy and then uh, talk about how we're going to tie this into solving some problems that are related to it. All right, a really quick review, mechanical energy. Uh, if you recall, uh, energy is by definition the ability to do work. It is measured in joules, right? So um, joules is the unit of measurement. We did that all before. Uh, we had two different types of energy that we looked at uh, in grade 11. Uh, one was gravitational potential energy. E subscript G equals the mass times the gravitational acceleration times the height above a reference point. Um, and the kinetic energy is uh, 1 half mv squared, or you can write it as mv squared over 2. Now, if you recall how we got to those, um, it was through this work formula. And so, you know, work is defined as the change in energy. Okay, it could be kinetic, potential, or both. It's actually any, it could be thermal, it could be anything, um, that change in energy. Now, all these equations, both the mgh and the mv squared over 2, they derive directly from f delta d, or the full one is, it's the dot product of two vectors, so f vector dot d vector, and if we're looking for the scalar value of it, it's f delta d cos theta, um, but for the problems that we're going to look at um, in this course, like this, we're going to assume the angle is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1, so we're just going to use f delta d. Now what we did last year is we said, well, what's the force being applied to an object? Um, and so that's mass times acceleration, which gave us the mat equation, ma delta d. We then uh, rewrote delta d as the average speed. Uh, and then we looked at the acceleration as v2 minus v1 over, over delta t. We did some math, and we ended up with the formula here for kinetic energy. It was actually mv2 squared over 2 minus mv1 squared over 2. So it was the change in the kinetic energy. And then we defined regular kinetic energy. If the initial velocity was 0, it was the amount of energy required to accelerate the object from 0 to that final speed. And that was the kinetic energy. Same thing for gravitational energy. Uh, it was ma delta d. Um, but the acceleration is gravity, so you're opposing the force of gravity, so it was mg delta d, and the change in d, we just called it the change in height, and so we ended up with mgh2 minus mgh1, and again, if we assume that we lifted it from the reference point of zero, the amount of energy it takes to lift it to some height above that reference point or the surface of the earth, it would be mgh. Now again, me talking through that is hopefully just to spark your memory a little bit about what we did last year for it. Conservation of mechanical energy is going to become extremely important in these questions. So in a closed system, uh, energy is not created nor destroyed. It's simply transformed from one form to another. As a result, the total mechanical energy that exists in a system remains constant. So remember, there's always these transfers of energy happening inside systems and um, the energy is not created nor destroyed, it's just transferred around in there. Another thing I want to point out is work done by friction. So work done by friction typically robs kinetic energy from an object in motion and can simply be subtracted from the total kinetic energy. So that's going to come into play when we're solving some of our problems. Okay, so you can print that out um, and just kind of keep it handy um, for the questions. We're just going to do now a couple of example problems. Okay. Now, we're going to do a couple, and then I'm going to assign some work. And the work that you do, uh, I'm going to post solutions for two of them, and then one is an assignment that you're going to submit um, to me. So problem solving using mechanical energy and momentum. So I put together a question where we have a 50 kilogram cart with an alien in it, of course. Uh, why wouldn't it be? OK. And it's moving towards a hill at a speed of 15 meters per second. We're going to ignore friction. And up here, um, we have Scooby-Doo, and um, it says here, when this cart collides with the other cart, and this is 80 kilograms, so it moves across, it goes up this five meter, hill, five meter high hill, and it's a little bit rough, um, and so there's a thousand 
100 joules of heat that's taken away from the object as it goes up that hill. When the carts collide at the top, um, moving to the left uh, at 2 meters per second frictionless, the collision is inelastic. So the two objects are going to stick together. So the question is, determine the following. Determine the final speed of the two combined carts, including the direction. Okay, so the question is really asking you, they're going to collide at the top up here somewhere, and then they're going to start moving together. So in order to do the collision problem, which is, you know, just conservation of momentum, we just need to figure out how fast is that alien cart moving when he gets to the top. That's it. So it's a two-part question. So the first part, let's look at the alien and just kind of figure out some, some stuff about the alien here. First of all, it's moving from the ground and he's got some speed to him so we know that he has kinetic energy so let's figure out the EK of the alien at the bottom down here so the EK is m v squared over 2 and his mass is 50 times 15 squared over 2 and so what we need to do at this point is just let's figure out how much energy that is 50 times 15 squared is a big number divided by 2. So you get 5,625 joules of energy. Now, when he goes up this hill up here, okay, so this is at the bottom. Now, let's look at the gravitational energy, mgh, which is 50 times 9.8 and the height is 5 so we go 50 there, there's a reason I'm not doing this um, just using the equations at this point because I just want to get some numbers so you can get a, a feel for what's happening at the top so at the bottom his total energy is 5625 joules when he gets to the top, he is going to have used up 2,450 joules of energy in order to make it to the top. And he's going to have some kinetic energy left over. So we know that at the bottom, this represents the total energy of the system. And energy. I don't know what that is. It's nice, nice spelling. Energy. All right, so it's the total energy that that guy has, that alien. At the top, he's now got this little bit of energy. Um, we know that he's going to lose 1,100 bits of energy as well. And whatever's left over will be his kinetic energy at the top. So at the top, we know that his kinetic energy is going to be, well, it's going to be whatever his total energy was. So that's our total energy here, E t minus how much energy he lost due to the potential storing potential energy into the object minus the 1100 joules of frictional energy that was also lost so the total energy at this point was 5625 less 2450 less 1100 so the kinetic energy at the top is 5,625 less 2450 less 1100 is there's 2,075 joules of kinetic energy left. Well, since kinetic energy is mv squared over 2, then this implies that if we rearrange this, it's going to be 2 ek over m square rooted. So we take the 2,075 times it by 2, divide it by the 50 kilograms, square root, and he's moving at 9.11 meters per second at the top. So his speed reduced from 15 down to 9.11. If there was no friction on this hill, we could have just ignored the 1,100 joules of energy that was lost, and he would have been moving more quickly. Okay. 
Now it's just a simple collision problem. We're going to assume or pick a direction to be positive. I'm going to make it to the right positive. And now we just write out, we know that the total momentum initial and the total momentum final are equal to each other. So it becomes M1 V1 I plus M2 V2 I equals M1 V1 F plus M2 V2 F, like so. At this point, we look and we say, okay, that's fine. Um, we know everything here. Um, we know that since it's inelastic, V1 F equals V2 F is V F, and we can common factor. We did this a whole bunch of times before, so just making it fast. And we therefore will find that the final velocity was M1 V1 I plus M2 V2 I all over the total mass. Substituting in our numbers, we've got the 50. He was moving at 9.11, we just solved for. Then you got Scooby Doo at 80, moving negative 2, because it's the opposite direction, divided by 130 kilograms. So we just go 50 times 9.11 less 160 divided by 130 is 2.27 meters per second. And it's to the right because it's positive. If it was negative, it'd be moving the opposite way. So even though the, the cart, the alien weighed a little bit less, or sorry, had less mass than Scooby-Doo, he was moving quicker, so there was more momentum in the positive direction than there was negative momentum from the other object. And so that's the final combined speed. So Scooby-Doo changed his speed from two in one direction to two in the opposite direction, which is a change of like four uh, meters per second, um, which is a lot. And the other one, he went from uh, 15 all the way down to 2, so he lost about uh, 13 meters per second of speed. Okay, so we're just going to look at another quick example uh, on the next page, and then you can try uh, some of these problems on your own. Okay, so for this type of problem here, um, we've got a 3 kilogram cart moving at 8.5 meters per second to the right, and there is a uh, 2 kilogram cart that is stationary. And they're going to collide and stick together uh, since it says the collision is inelastic. The question is, how high up the ramp do they go? Okay, so let's look at the collision first. Um, we know that the total momentum um, before is equal to the total momentum after. So we would write MA VAI plus MB VBI equals. M A V A F plus M B V B F. Okay. And since it's a inelastic collision, the final speed of them is this. And the last part is simply solving for V F. We just did it on the other page. I'm just going to go right to the number so I can save some space. So it's 3 times, uh, I'm assuming this direction to be positive, um, 8.5 plus 2 times 0 since it was initially at rest over the total mass of 5. So VF is equal to, so we just do 3 times 8.5 plus 0 because 2 times 0 is 0, divided by 5 and their speed together is 5.1 meters per second. Okay, so that's how fast these two were moving at the bottom of the hill. So at that point, you're thinking, okay, what kind of energy do they have at that point? Well, since they're at the bottom of the hill, all of the energy was kinetic. So that's MA plus MB, because they're combined together, times the speed they were traveling at, 
all over 2, right? So I think you can see that, that you would just combine their masses because they're stuck together now. They had a final speed of 5.1 over 2, and this will tell us how many joules of energy the carts had at that point. So you have 5 times 5.1 divided by 2 is 12.75. Nope, forgot to square it. 5.1 squared times 5 is this divided by 2 is 65.025 joules. Okay, so that's how much kinetic energy it had at that point. So the next part is when it reaches the max height, so at max height, V equals 0, it stops moving. So if it stops moving, then that means that all the EK becomes EG. So EG would equal the EK, and that would be MGH, which must equal 65.025. And so we solve for the height by taking the 65.025, dividing it by the combined mass. This is mass of AB. And the gravitational acceleration. So 65.025 divided by 5 divided by 9.8 is 1.33 meters. That's how high up it would go. Okay. Now, you could have done this all algebraically. I didn't have enough space. You could have written this equation here for VF, left in the MA, VAI, all that stuff. You could have substituted it in over here, left it all, and substituted all that stuff into there. You then could have set that equal to MA plus MBGH, and then rearranged and solved for H, and you could have got a nice big fancy equation that you could then you know write a computer program for and just say, well, how fast is what, the, what are the two masses and how fast are they moving and plug it in and get your answer and you would solve it um, very nicely so that's something neat to try if you have space or you want to give that a shot uh, try that out okay so now let's say that the slopes change the original slope looked like this and the other slope looked um, like that the question is the slope of the ramp change to the curse will reach Will they reach a higher height, the same height, or lesser height? So I want you to think about that and put it on pause for a second. Okay. So I hopefully you all agreed that it would still just go to the same height. So if it made it up to a height of 1.33 here, it will make it to a height of 1.33 here. Clearly it will travel further, but it will make it to the same height if this was less sloped, it would still make it to the same height. No matter how little or how steep you make it, right, it will always, now it's going to be off the page, but it would still make it to that same height further down. It just travels a bigger distance. And that's because the amount of gravitational energy must be the same in each case, right? Because it's the, it's the gravitational energy that you're storing from all that kinetic energy that will tell you how high it would go to. Okay, so what you're going to do now is try the inelastic and elastic collision problems. There are two problem sets for that, and then there's a collisions assignment. I'm going to post the solutions for the first two, um, and then the assignment you're going to hand in.